Bit of a different theme for today's video as this is not a old radio, it's a new radio, it's a brand new radio that I just got. And I thought we'd take a look at this and also look at it in the context of the radio that it's replacing. And we'll also explore a few byways about digital radio, both uh, DAB and internet streaming along the way. So this video might be a little bit longer than normal. I'll put chapter marks in it, which I don't always do. So if you find some bits a bit tedious, you can skip forward to the ones that you might find interesting, should there actually be any. Anyway, starting with this radio, this is a Robert Stream 94L, which is the newest sort of multifunction digital radio music player type thing. Retail price varies a bit. It's around £200. I didn't actually pay that for it. I didn't pay for this at all. This was a gift. That's not to say it was a gift from the manufacturer or anything or any anybody who has a uh, profit motive in this. So I'm not shilling for the Roberts company in any sense. And I think if you've seen any of my previous videos, I could never be accused of that. However, I think it is a good product. But before we get down to the details of this one, I thought we'd uh, take a look at the radio that it's replacing because there's some very interesting differences so let's start with that right now this is its predecessor this is the Robert Stream 83i and I got this around um, I think about 11 years ago and it's been pretty much a you know almost daily use since then I've used it in many places for many things it's got quite a lot of functionality and I'm going to turn it on now uh, I've got it muted so we don't get hit by the copyright cops. Uh, you can see it's got a DAB function, obviously, um, but also I can cycle through other functions with this mode button here. So I've got a standard FM radio there. Um, aux in, so there's a 3.5 millimeter socket on the back, so you can feed a stereo audio signal into there, and it'll play that through the speakers. Um, internet radio and uh, music player as well. Now music player. Uh, you can either put a USB stick in here um, on the front panel or you can play from a, um, it's got shared media here. So if you've got a server on the network, which I do happen to have, so I'll just select that. You can go to that server and browse the music on there and, um, you know, play anything that you want from there. Also probably about seven years ago or so um, we had a, a family sort of party function down at the local football club and um, I took this along with the USB stick and I thought well we'll play um, you know selection of music I picked through their PA system but they only had one of those four pin three and a half millimeter jacks that you're expecting you to plug your phone into obviously phones they don't have those jacks anymore either but um, that's what was common at that time and it didn't really work plugging it into the output of this because of the four pin connector so in the end I just use this turned up with the um, using the speakers on this um, to play all the music and it was pretty reasonable I mean we had it up fairly loud not ridiculously loud but then there's a lot of old people like us and we're not really into the sort of vertical drinking establishment volume levels but it did a sterling job so again another reason why I'm quite impressed with this thing in terms of the controls you've got your volume control here and then a lot of the other functionality is done through this control here. So you've got the tuning um, knob. Now the tuning knob in this case, it's um, because it's on music player, it acts as a selector and you can go and pick one of the thing, one of the tracks on the album and play that. Or if it's obviously on a, um, if I put it into radio mode, then it will actually act as a tuning thing. In terms of selecting through the uh, stations, if I put it into FM mode, then it will do as you expect and change the frequencies. Also, when it's in radio mode, your presets, you have five presets which are on these buttons here. They look as if they should be illuminated, but they're not. That's just a snare and a delusion. When it's in music mode, these things act as transport controls effectively. Another interesting function is if it's completely turned off, I just wait for it to go back into standby mode and dim that display. Then, and this is a hidden functionality they put in with the later updates of software. If you press and hold the three button, you get the ability to change the alarms. 
without having to switch the thing on. Now, I've never used it as a um, bedside radio alarm because I always felt it was a little bit too bulky for that and I wanted it for more for use in my study, but the functionality is nevertheless there. If I'm on um, an internet or DAB station, then this info button will give me a few of the options that I can look at and also give me some technical data as well like the bit rate and the encoding and things like that and also you know whether it's buffering you've got a number of functions available off the menu where you can set up uh, system settings and things like network stuff time and date and it's got built-in equalizer which works on the speakers but obviously doesn't work on the uh, audio app and the main audio output which you can use to feed into your other amplifier Looking around the back of it, you can see there's two little speakers at the front. They are stereo speakers, uh, and obviously being close together, you don't get a massive amount of stereo image, but you do get some, and it is noticeable. You'll also note that uh, although it has a handle and it looks like a portable set, it's not particularly portable because it's powered from this plug-top power supply, 12-volt power supply that goes into the back of it. Um, you could get a battery pack a rechargeable battery pack to go on the back of it i never bothered with that it's about 50 quid um and it didn't seem worth it to me as i never really carried it around very much also has a um ethernet socket so you know if your wi-fi reception isn't that good you can, you can plug it in straight into your uh, network this usb socket here in the manual it says it's for service only i don't know quite what it does i've tried plugging it into a computer to see if i can see anything but i can't i thought maybe it was the firmware updates but it does get firmware or it did get firmware updates over the internet so i'm not sure really what it was for i mean it, the last firmware update it got was quite some time ago and i don't think it's going to get any more to be honest now you might ask if this is so good why am i having to replace it and the reason is because in terms of the internet radio functionality, which is a lot of what I use it for, the BBC has decided that from the middle of this year, it will stop using the streaming format for internet radio that this radio depends on. And the one that it's moving to, this radio can't stream. So a lot of the functionality of this radio has been removed. They removed a lot of it previously as well, um, probably about five or six years ago when they got rid of the ability to do um, the old listen again service where you could do a sort of catch up radio service that was another streaming format that they dropped and said at the time you know you need to go and do all this online their answer again here is either buy a new radio which is what i've done or you know use it on the bbc sounds app which you can get on your mobile phone well fine but i don't always want to use a mobile phone to listen to the radio it's also on my telly i don't necessarily want to have to use my telly to listen to the radio i'd like to use my radio to listen to the radio you'd think the bbc being a publicly funded body would have got that message and understood that but it seems to be that they just don't really care anymore so um that's the reason why i got a newer version of this which will support that now the other interesting thing on this point is the other services that this can receive. So if I go into DAB, oh, well, I didn't mention actually, it also has this other functionality for a thing called Last FM. Now, Last FM still exists as a website and you get recommendations for playlists and things like that. And the idea was that as you're playing it, you can sort of drive it a bit by saying, using these love and ban buttons, saying, yes, this is great, and please play that more often. And no, I absolutely hate this, don't ever play it again. The functionality in here is pretty dead because they don't actually provide a streaming feed anymore. Now, Last FM got a lot of grief for that. And, uh, you know, maybe having given the BBC some grief, I should give them some as well. But it's all been done to death, really. And in the end, Last FM are a commercial operation. If it doesn't make money, they're not obliged to do it. I always thought the whole purpose of the BBC was obliged to do things that didn't make money. That's why we have to pay a tax to support it. Anyway, we won't get into that discussion here. Um, suffice it to say that it's another piece of functionality that doesn't work. Let's go back to what I was saying. Digital audio broadcasting, DAB, DAB radio. We were pioneers of that in this country. We went into it very early. And that, in some ways, was a good thing. 
but in other ways it was a bad thing and similarly we were pioneers of things like underground railways and that didn't help us either because although we have some of the oldest underground railways in the world we also have some of the worst because everything is burdened with history and to some extent that's what's happened with DAB when we started doing this the encoding that was developed for it was something called MP2 now pretty much everybody's aware what MP3 is and therefore you probably rightly guess that MP2 is a somewhat worse version of that and that's what these things use if I um, look at the info button here and you can see that this is MP2 format it's showing on here now there are some limitations of this and as you can see greatest hits Cambridge are here look at this 80 kilobits that's quite low frequency a mono that's pretty bad really in fact it's not the worst and I don't know whether I'll get this because the um, reception here might not be good but I will try to uh, see if we can get this radio station which is doing very well it's had very good uh, increasing figures boom radio which um, is for the uh, sort of older listener about my age and above uh, it's yeah it says service not available it's just not got a very good signal there yeah if I put my hand on the aerial I can just about get it and let's have a look at the info on that 24 kilobits mono <laughs> now, that is just absolutely appalling I mean you might as well have kept AM radio if that's all you're going to broadcast <laughs> and using it now you can see this uses this codec AAC so it's not MP2 this is a thing that's called DAB plus this is a new format of uh, digital audio broadcasting a lot of radios that were bought in the early days of DAB won't support it so we went through a whole period of telling everybody that you know analog radio will end you need to get yourself a digital radio there's much more stuff available on it lots of people were persuaded to buy digital radios and now they're going to have to quietly say you know those digital radios we told you to upgrade to because analog broadcasting was ending well some analog broadcasting is still going but this time of digital broadcasting that's going away so you've got to buy another one so I thought we'd have a bit of a technical sidebar here. If you go back to the days of analog radio, there wasn't really much in the way of processing. There was a bit of filtering, but the audio basically went straight to the modulator, whether it was AM or FM. Now, the concept of an encoder appeared only with FM stereo, where you had to encode the left and right into a single signal. And if you break out the encoder, as we've done here, what you can see is that part of it includes the mono signal. So if you used your old radio, you were listening to the stereo signal, which now had stereo components on it, as well as the mono bit, you still heard the mono bit. It didn't matter. They didn't have to have different frequencies. You obviously had to buy a new radio if you wanted to hear stereo. But they didn't say to you, now that we're broadcasting in stereo, you have to throw all your old radios in the bin and buy new ones if you want to carry on listening. With DAB, the situation is a little more complicated because you've got multiple radio stations, effectively all on the same frequency. And this is a sort of layout here where you have a number of feeds that are all encoded separately and the digital encoder here you will find that with DAB it's MP2, with DAB plus it's AAC plus. And from then onwards it goes into a multiplexer which combines all the bit streams together. So you've got several sets of bit streams coming from each of the channels. And the multiplexer then puts all of those together. So you have one multiplex, as it's called, with lots of radio channels on it. Here's an example of a local multiplex and you can see all the channels that are there. Now, at the end of that, you have a more complex system of modulation than you had before because you have this OFDM, which stands for Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiplexing and QPSK, which is Quadrature Phase Shift Keying. Now, these two technologies are rather complicated to go into. I'm not going to try and do that here. But essentially, they give you the ability to transmit zeros and ones over a radio signal, which is not as straightforward as transmitting analog signals, and also allows you to have multiple copies and make it more resilient against um, interference. And I've sort of grouped these in terms of what I call encoding, which is the encoders, and delivery. Now, some people might say the multiplex is part of the encoding, not part of the delivery, but I've lumped them together. That's my opinion. 
If we look at the internet radio system, then we're not multiplexing them all together. We have a feed which goes into an encoder, which in this case will be either, usually will be either MP3 or AAC+. And the output of that goes to a streaming service. Now, the streaming services, and there have been lots of them around in the past. I've shown a few of them. As I said, Windows Media Audio was one that was used by the BBC for distributing the sort of listen again feeds. They turned that off for a number of reasons. They were paying quite a lot of, they had quite a lot of old hardware to do it and they were paying quite a lot of licensing fees to Microsoft for the privilege. So that got turned off, thereby reducing the functionality of my radio. And then of course, they're now gonna turn off the one they're currently using, which is Shoutcast. And that leaves us with HLS and Dash. So when you look at the way things have progressed as they went from FM mono to FM stereo, there was no impact on existing sets and existing listeners. They could still continue to use their old equipment. When you've gone from DAB to DAB plus, there's a gradual degradation because as new stations come online that are DAB plus only, you won't be able to receive them. When you go and turn off the shoutcast stream, what happens is radios get cut off completely. One thing I will say about this is a front end sensitivity of this radio and in fact its successor not brilliant. If I put it on FM, it's actually quite poor. You can probably hear that's quite hissy really. And if I put it on radio four. Now it's interesting that it's so bad on FM really. Obviously, if I took an earlier Roberts radio, an old analog FM radio, it would sound a lot better than that with a telescopic aerial extended on Radio 4. And in fact, I'll actually show you a previous version of a Roberts DAB radio that sounds better. So there's something that's a bit older. This is a uh, Roberts RD5. So this is quite an early digital radio. Uh, again, nicely built sort of thing. Um, but this has got FM available on it as well. And I've got it tuned to Radio 4 here on FM. And when he's down, you know, and I actually do think, I know others disagree with this, to certain constituencies, to certain groups within our society. It sounds pretty good. Um, so it's not absolutely necessary if you build a DAB set that you have to make the FM a bit rubbish. Now, while we're on this, I thought we'd just have a look at the effect of having an old set which has only the MP2 DAB decoder and see what happens when you tune to DAB plus signals. So right it is on Radio 4 DAB and if I retune it and go to something like I know that um, Heart 80s for example uh, now that tunes in it seems to pick it up but when you put the volume up you hear nothing it's completely blank and if I go around the info buttons um, if, I, if I press the extended info you can see that it knows that it's got a 40 kilobit second joint stereo stream, but because it's AAC plus, it can't do anything with it. And you're beginning to get this a lot on older DAB radios now, where you get channels that are picked up, but they're completely blank. So we've wandered a bit around Ilkley and Otley, haven't we? Uh, with uh, all sorts of side tracking and uh, old radios and technical details and not really cover the whole point of the video, which is to look at the new radio. So what do I think about the new radio? Well, there are some things that are better, some things that are worse, some things that are the same, as you might expect. But I think on balance, um, you know, it, I, I'm slightly disappointed with it, although it is still a good set. I don't think it really excites me as much as when I got the original one. And I'll go through uh, a few things about it. Now, uh, in layout, it's pretty similar, really, but they've regularised the buttons and put them into a single strip. That's both an advantage and a disadvantage because I find these legends a little too small to read and also I don't quite understand what they mean. I mean this thing here, I don't know if you can quite see it, but it, it, um, it probably shows it better on the remote control. Both of these sets came with remote controls and uh, you can do all the functions from that. And if you look on here, there's this thing that to me looks like a, um, looks a bit like a paw print but actually it's meant to look like an old waveband selector. So that's a mode selector switch. Let's uh, switch it on. Obviously the big thing is that the internet radio will play the new streams, whereas the old one wouldn't, and that's the real reason I bought it. So that's the, you know, 
That's a major advantage, you can't deny that. Also, when you look at it, obviously display technology has moved on a little bit compared to what we had 11 years ago with the old um, LCD text screen, which, to be honest, uh, you know, I tend to have this on a shelf quite reasonably high up, and I can't really read the screen of that um, without, without squinting at it. I mean, that's probably just my age as well as the radio's age, really. It's perfectly all right when it's down at this level. It has some features that the other one didn't, um, podcast is actually nothing special. The old one had that, but it's incorporated into the internet radio. This has DAB Plus, but then even though Roberts said that the old one, they, they made a statement saying anything before 2014 won't have DAB Plus, but the other one does have DAB Plus, so, and it's older than that, so maybe that one just sneaked in with a software update or something like that, I'm not sure. FM radio, again, there's not much to choose between them. Orcs in again, not much to say about it. The last FM is obviously gone. It's now got a Spotify client. You can't control that from the radio or the remote control, actually. You have to control that from your Spotify app and then you connect to it and use it as a separate speaker. It's also got clients for Amazon Music and Deezer. I don't really see the point of adding these, to be honest, because aren't they going to be a bit of a hostage to fortune the same way that the last FM was? So if any of these services change the way that they deliver stuff then these bits of it are going to stop working and because it actually has what the other one didn't have it actually has bluetooth as well if it has bluetooth do you really need a spotify client do you really need an amazon music client i mean you can play that from your phone when you come to usb playback you'll notice it only has usb playback now there's no longer an option to play from a network music server which is annoying me a bit because I have one and I have a lot of my old CDs ripped onto that but I imagine I'm a bit of a minority group here in that sense I don't think many people have got a media server running on their network but the other thing I, um, about this is it seems to be a bit of a bug in it it doesn't seem to like it if there's too much stuff on the USB stick and I'll show you what happens with that actually the one I've got in at the moment hasn't got much in it so let me change it over and I'll show you what I mean so um, I'm going to say yes to this and turn the volume down at the moment. So again, this wheel scrolls through it and um, selects all, you know, you can go in and select one of the albums and then look at the uh, tracks within it. Now, when you get to the top of something like that, it's supposed to wrap around, which is fine. It does that there. But what I found is that if you go back and sorry just go back to the top level if you go to the top it should wrap around to the bottom but it doesn't it goes to this please wait loading thing and i thought well maybe it's just rescanning the usb stick so i'll leave it for a while went off and uh, made a cup of tea still doing this after about 25 minutes i gave up on it in fact the set kept timing out and saying do you want me to turn myself off um so it gets stuck in this and the only way to fix it is the time-honored IT method of turning it off and on again and you can then go back into it and um, crush it again and the way it crashes is that you get to a certain point and I know that I found this because I, I wanted to play this and play some music on it so I took some of the YouTube music library that you're allowed to play without getting copyright strikes and I put it in a folder called YouTube strangely <laughs> enough and um, obviously YouTube is quite a long way down the bottom even after yes um, but we don't get as far as that, because once we get to somewhere in the T's, it does this again. I tried this in the old set, the same USB stick, and it's fine. So I think there's a bug in this. Hopefully they'll release a software update for it. So I'm now going to go back to the other USB stick so you can actually hear it playing some music. That sounds pretty good. Um, I do find that the standard flat equalization that it comes with is not quite right for me. It's a bit too bass heavy. So um, I have actually put a bit of custom EQ on it, which I can probably find if I go to the menu um, in system settings, equalizer. You can see I've got um, my EQ there. And it's just actually, just a, I haven't changed the bass. So I just put a slight treble lift on it. 
It doesn't feel to me it's quite as loud on USB as the old one was, so it wouldn't have helped us out in my um, banging 1970s party tape situation, but uh, we're not likely to try anything as risky as that again. And the rest of the stuff, the functionality is fine, the sound is fine, and the quality isn't quite, it doesn't feel quite as solid as the old one. The old one actually had a proper wooden case with a nice piano black finish on it. I know that because I have had the back off that. I'm not going to take the back off this one because it's brand new. I don't want to invalidate the warranty or anything. But if you look at the top of it, it, it has a more sort of conventional plasticky wood effect finish. You can get this in a sort of what they call natural wood effect, although when I looked at that natural wood effect, it looked more like the wood effect on the dashboard of a 1970s Ford Escort, and I did prefer the black one still. Again, this, this bit here doesn't feel quite straight. These buttons don't quite line up at the end here. So there's a little sort of ridge there, which there shouldn't be really when you're paying. I know these are nitpicking things, but this is an expensive radio. And I'm not saying it's not good. If I'd never seen the previous one, I probably wouldn't really have many criticisms of this, apart from the bug in the USB playback. I don't think it's a proper wooden case, and as a result of that, it doesn't have quite the same weight. So I used to be able to, on the old one, press that button without holding the set, right? And I can't now, the thing falls over. I have to put my hand on there and press it, which, you know, again, these are first of all problems, aren't they? Now, both this radio and the uh, 83i that we looked at earlier have the ability to be controlled via an app called Undock, um, which I've got here. And so in addition to remote control, you can use the app. And the app is quite good, really. Um, so I can pick up this unit and change the source, um, pick up my internet radio stations or whatever. And I can access all the presets and things. This has a lot more presets, although there are only five on the front panel. If you press the favorites button, the little heart button there, you can get access to a load more presets here. Um, now I seem to have got you stuck onto Spotify. Let's put it back onto uh, internet radio again. And you can get a lot more presets here. It doesn't seem to have the shared presets that the previous one had um, that you could define online. Um, but that's not a big thing because it's got so many of the presets available on the radio itself. I don't really regard that as a massive loss, so I'm not too worried about that. It also does strike me that they don't make very good use when you're doing things like playing from USB. So I know that this USB stick has got um, metadata on it. Um, and, you know, you can get at some of the metadata by pressing the info button here. So you can get the artist and the album and other things about it but they haven't brought the album art up here and I know there is album art on those tracks because when I play it on other things it shows up um, again if you play th stuff through Spotify I think it actually I think it does show up on Spotify it doesn't show up if you play it through Bluetooth I'm not sure if that's a thing anywhere whether it should do that through Bluetooth but it certainly ought to show it off the USB and you know again a similar thing when you look on DAB Plus, um, if, I, if I reselect it back to DAB. So again here on DAB we've got Classic FM playing, but we're not getting the Classic FM logo here. And again, it is possible to pick that up on my car radio, it will show a logo. Now, obviously these again are minor things that I'm just nitpicking about because even if I'm listening to this in the house, I'm not going staring at the screen when I'm playing stuff on the radio. That would be a bit pointless. And if I was staring at the screen when I was playing stuff on the car radio, that would not just be pointless, but it would be me being an utter... It just feels to me, though, that if you're going to put all this technology in there and you've got improved technology that you couldn't do with the old one, why not take advantage of it? And I think this comes down to the, the real nub of the problem, which is it's not really Robert's radio, is it? I mean, it hasn't been for years. And even when you look back to the 1970s and things like the R700, I think, or the 707... Um, those they put modules built by Mullard into them and they told you that you know if there's anything wrong with them don't try and fix them just send them back to us and we'll replace them I very much doubt when they do that now if you sent an R707 Mullard module back to them but even then they were assembling it from other people's parts and nowadays of course there's no pretense that Roberts is actually building radios in people in a factory with um, white coats on and a man wandering around with the clipboard it's actually they buy in whatever Chinese chipset is available and they bought in the latest Chinese chipset which they needed to make this set 
and it doesn't have some of the features that the old one used to have, but it does have some features that the old one didn't have. So you just make a um, virtue out of necessity, really. So I think this is a good radio, but I think, then again, the price is very high. Um, and I'm not sure it's now justified just for the name, but I would actually look at, and I have a um, majority tuner, and I think some of the stuff from the majority brand is probably now looking better than the Roberts stuff. Well, in the end, it's using all the same chipsets. They market themselves as a company from Cambridge and put lots of Cambridge names on their radio sets. But actually, they're just using the same bits as Roberts are. I just think they're packaging them slightly better nowadays. Anyway, again, this has been a long journey for this one, and I hope you've managed to find something in it, even if you've had to skip through a few bits you may have found less than interesting. And I'll see you on the next one, where we'll look at something a little older.